If you seem to have poor immunity, you may want to try having food allergy testing performed, or maybe what's better termed food sensitivity testing. Now I say this because if your immune system is being overwhelmed attacking the food you're eating every single day, it's not going to obviously be able to do what it should be doing, which is killing viruses and bacteria as well as modulating immune system reactions and inflammatory reactions throughout the body. There are numerous ways that your immune system reacts to things, and these are termed hypersensitivity reactions. Now, we're all familiar with the first type of hypersensitivity reaction, which is, which is an immediate type of reaction. It's a histamine-mediated reaction. So we're all familiar with these. If you get a bee sting and you swell up and you get anaphylactic reaction, you got to go to the hospital. Or if you're allergic to mold or pollen, you have hay fever, cats, dogs, things like that. Those are all histamine mediated reactions. So histamine causes itching and swelling and runny nose and all those symptoms that we associate with these types of reactions, which happen to be fairly immediate. However, there's other ways that your immune system reacts and they tend not to be immediate. In fact, they tend to be delayed. Now, food allergy reactions or food sensitivities are part of those types of delayed reactions. So they're delayed in the sense that you could eat a food, for example, and you may not notice anything at all. And, and most of the time, people actually never correlate the food that they're eating with any sort of delayed reaction. And the delay could be anything from hours to even maybe a day or two. So you know, most of us tend to eat the same foods on a daily basis. And the chances are that you're probably having a reaction to something that you're eating, but you're having that happen, if not at every meal, at least every day. And then all the symptoms that you're getting, if you're getting symptoms, all the symptoms that you're getting from these food sensitivities just sort of overlap and sort of become like background noise. So most people actually don't realize that they're having food sensitivities. And it can be um, challenging to determine these, which is where food testing or food sensitivity testing comes in. So food sensitivity testing is based on doing um, blood testing. This is different than, you know, if you think you've had food allergy tests and you go to say like an allergist and often they'll do skin testing. Well, the skin testing is specifically introducing an antigen or some foreign thing like cat dander into your skin and then you're looking to get a reaction, a histamine reaction. So again, these are histamine mediated reactions. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for are the delayed reactions because you're not gonna know that you're having a delayed reaction generally, all the while it's going to be potentially impairing your immune system function. So what causes food allergies? Probably the most common thing that causes food allergies is leaky gut syndrome. Now, I did a previous video on leaky gut syndrome and intestinal hyperpermeability. If you spread the small intestine completely flat, it's the size of a tennis court. So there's this entire huge surface that's selectively permeable. So you need to absorb things um, that your body needs like amino acids and fats and uh, minerals and proteins and things like that. Um, but then you also need to block out things that are not supposed to be in your bloodstream, namely bacteria and yeast and viruses and things like that, um, but also partially digested food stuff. So if you have leaky gut syndrome, large molecular weight structures are going to be able to get through the intestinal barrier into the bloodstream where your immune system is going to go haywire and start reacting to the very foods that you're eating. So this is what we're talking about here. And in fact, in, in a previous video about leaky gut syndrome, I mentioned that I don't typically test for leaky gut syndrome because I prefer to do food sensitivity testing because the food, if you're having a lot of food sensitivities, you can infer that you probably have intestinal hyperpermeability, which is what caused the food allergies to begin with. So rather than do intestinal hyperpermeability testing, I think you get more bang for the buck um, from doing food sensitivity testing. Now, I've done food sensitivity testing for about 25 years, and um, I've used a number of different labs over the years. Um, you know, initially when I started practice, I, I, I wasn't getting really good results with, with a specific lab and then I kind of got disgusted with testing and then I switched to a different. So I've done, I've done a handful of different labs. They're not all the same. So the first thing I'd say is if you're anticipating or you're intending on doing food sensitivity testing, um, I would use a reputable lab because even though the tests are supposed to be the same, I've seen um, 
you know, I've seen some labs where it just seems like um, the results are not are not great because when you know, like I said, I've done this testing for a very long time and I get great results with it. I use it for GI related disorders and, and other things like that, sometimes skin disorders, chronic sinusitis, lung issues, things like that. But when you implement the, um, the protocol after having the testing done, it, it works extremely well, um, probably 90, 95% of the time it clears up whatever issues there are. So I really like food sensitivity testing in the lab that I currently use I have a lot of confidence in usually these are done in office so you have to draw serum and then you know you have to go to a doctor they'll draw your blood and they spin it down and send the serum to the lab and, and do it that way however you can do you know drop ship kits so there is a possibility of doing at a distance um, testing where I can have the test kit drop shipped to your home and you can do a blood um, stick in your in your home and you and that gets shipped off to the lab and then the lab does the same type of testing and then I get the results and then we can go over the results so this can be this is something that can be done um, without needing to actually come into the office some of these tests can also be really expensive now I use a test that I years ago that I really liked and I got really good results with but it ended up being about $2,100. They raised their fees and, and the test ended up being $2,100. Well, I couldn't charge, I mean, I just couldn't charge people $2,100 for a test. So I started looking for some different laboratories and, and finally came by the one that I use now, which tests 184 foods and it costs about $380, um, which is, you know, much better. So again, if you're, if you're struggling either finding somebody that can do the testing or you'd like to have me um, do the testing for you, just um, you know, shoot me an email and I can have the test kit drop shipped to you and then you can do the testing. Once you have the results of the test, it's gonna show which foods have high antibody titers. So these are IgG4 um, type antibody tests. So we're looking at antibody reactions to 184 different foods. And um, foods that have high titers mean that you're having a lot of reactivity and you're having, you know, you're having a lot of immune system reactivity, which is why the antibodies are elevated. When you have the results, then you just simply eliminate the foods for um, about 12 weeks. And usually most people will have an amelioration of any sort of symptoms that they're having um, within a couple weeks. Now everybody doesn't need to run out and do food allergy testing. Who needs to do it or who should consider doing food sensitivity testing? You should consider doing food sensitivity testing if you've had any persistent sort of viral or bacterial infection. So this includes HPV. If you've had, you know, if you've been struggling with HPV for, you know, more than maybe a year, two years, three years, um, or you've had maybe cervical dysplasia and that's been coming back, you know, then I would consider doing food sensitivity testing because it may be that, you know, you need to do everything you can to, you know, to maximize immune system function. And the single most important thing probably with regard to immunity isn't so much, are you taking the right supplement? It's more about, are you damaging your immune system at every single meal, every single day. I mean, that's gonna have, so, so what you're doing with your diet um, and what's happening in your gut is, is likely going to have more of an adverse or potentially more of an adverse impact on your immune system and overall health than what can be mitigated, you know, with just simply taking some supplements. So the idea of just popping some pills is, is just kind of silly if you're not addressing um, your diet, your gut function, and, and, and not addressing food sensitivity reactions. So if you're having chronic viral issues, HPV, I would consider doing um, food sensitivity testing. If you're having, especially also if you're having any sort of GI issues. Um, so if you're having bloating, uh, irritable bowel symptoms, inflammatory bowel disorders like IBD, um, chronic skin conditions, also um, chronic sinus issues. Any sort of chronic illness I would start to, because all illness has at their root, or all illnesses have at their root um, inflammation. So there's an inflammatory component to, all, to pretty much all disease. 
um, especially chronic disease, and you know, inflammation is part of the immune system. So if you're having dysfunctional immunity, you really should be looking at whether you're having chronic food sensitivities that just haven't been identified. Um, autoimmune disease also, the, the root of, and I've said this in my leaky gut video, the origin of leaky gut syndrome seems to, or the origin of in, um, autoimmune disease seems to be leaky gut syndrome, so you really wanna be addressing that. So I hope you like this video. If you did, please, um, hit the like button and um, share my videos.